Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Fisherman's Pie. That's right, after a long, hard day on the high seas, catching fish, smoking cigarettes, and filming reality television shows, many fishermen love to relax by heading down to the galley to make delicious casseroles. And while it's very simple to make, there are a few components you need to get ready ahead of time, the first of which being mashed potatoes. Okay, so we're going to boil some russet potatoes in some salted water, of course, until very tender. That knife should go in with no effort, and then you're going to want to drain those extremely well. We don't want any water in the pot. After they're drained, you're going to go ahead and mash in a little bit of butter. And after you smash that nice and smooth, we're going to season that with some freshly grated nutmeg. You know we like that instead of the pre-ground. We also need some salt and black pepper, a little cayenne, of course, and a nice big splash of milk. And then we're going to mix and mash that until we have a beautiful, smooth, creamy mashed potato mixture. And that's going to be our topping. Next is on to the fresh spinach. So in a large Dutch oven with just a little bit of olive oil on medium high heat, I'm going to throw in my spinach with a big pinch of salt. And we're going to wilt this down. It's only going to take about a minute. Just stir it constantly. And in just a few seconds, it will break down. And it will look something like that. At that point, stop. Transfer that into a bowl lined with paper towels. That will help wick away some of that excess moisture. And we're just going to set that aside while we go on to the final component, which is the white cream sauce. We've made these a million times. But just a quick review, we're going to do a roux with some butter and flour over medium heat. So we're going to whisk that up. We're going to cook that for about two minutes. At that point, I want you to add some chopped garlic. And we're only going to cook that for about 10 or 20 seconds. Just give it a little sizzle. And then we're going to whisk in our cold milk. Remember, cold milk, hot roux, no lumps. So we're going to dump in that first cup, whisk it in. No, those are not lumps. Those are pieces of garlic. Relax. As soon as the first cup's in, go ahead and whisk in the second cup. All right, our heat is still on medium. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some lemon zest, whisk that in. And all we need to do is let this come up to a very gentle simmer, just like that. And that's pretty much done. Of course, you're going to season with salt. Make sure you taste it. And once you're happy with the taste, just turn that off until you're ready to use it, which is just going to be a few minutes, because we are on to final assembly. Or as they call it on the high seas, well, it's still final assembly. So anyway, we're going to butter our casserole dish. I think this is an 8x12 pan. And then I'm going to sprinkle over that salt, pepper, and cayenne. So we're actually going to season the butter and then lay the fish over that instead of seasoning the fish. So I'm going to place in boneless cod fillets. I really love all kinds of fish, but especially the one-syllable fish. We're going to try to do a single layer as even in thickness as possible. We're, of course, going to season the top layer also, salt, pepper, cayenne. All right. Once that is seasoned, we're going to go ahead and scatter our now cool-to-the-touch wilted spinach over the top, again, as even as possible. We will follow that by making it rain with the juice of half a lemon, and then we will top that with our recently completed white sauce. So just ladle that over. Once that's on there, go ahead and take your spatula. Go ahead and even it out. All right, if you see a spot where you got to poke it down a little, go ahead. And then just to hedge our bets, and because I like to say it and you like to hear it, let's give it the old tapa tapa, in addition to the old shaka shaka. All right, so a couple of each. And then it's time to top with the mashed potatoes, but we're not going to start spreading yet. We're going to plop first. For something like this, you always, always have to plop before you spread. Otherwise, you're going to mix the stuff from underneath into the crust, which is what we don't want. So plop it on there like that, then take your spatula and then smooth it out. All right, just going to work a lot better. And by the way, just go ahead and do a smooth surface. I thought I was going to be all cool and make a design. So I did these spatula-generated waveforms, but that actually turned out to be a waste of time, as you'll see. So I'm going to transfer that onto a baking sheet because this will usually and always does bubble over. And then we're going to pop that in a preheated 375-degree oven for 40 minutes, after which it's going to look like this. Okay, and two things. One, my design has disappeared. Total waste of time. Two, that doesn't look very inviting. So I always do this extra step of turning off the oven, turning on the broiler, and just browning that top for a couple minutes so that it looks like that, which in my opinion is way more inviting looking. That looks delicious. In fact, it looks so delicious you want to eat right now, but don't. Too hot. If you want to test, stick a knife in. The fish should flake easily underneath. It should go in pretty much without resistance. And if you're not sure, just dig in and check. It's fine. You can put it back together. And after 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and portion this up. And please, respect the pie. 
All right, I want you to carefully cut out a piece with your spoon, go through the crust, and then reach underneath so that the top stays on top and the bottom stays underneath. If you want to garnish with some fresh herb, like some chive, that would be beautiful. Maybe some tarragon. Ooh, that'd be good. And that's it. Fisherman's pie. You can see that cod there. It's flaking. It's mingling with that delicious spinach and garlic and lemon scented sauce. You have those creamy buttery potatoes on top. There's just no way this is not going to be good. But anyway, besides being pretty simple to make and almost impossible to overcook, this really does taste fantastic. So I hope you give it a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.